All right. Well, I want to welcome everybody. This is the uh, FANA new member orientation. This would probably be session one. Um, my name is Jason Tice. I'm the executive director of FANA, and this is being put on by our uh, FANA membership committee. We've got several uh, members here from the membership committee. Our chair, Rebecca Eckerd. We have Jess Dodge, uh, Megan Moran, and I believe that's it from the membership committee. So I want to welcome them and thank them for being here. Rebecca, you have any uh, any words from the membership committee? We're just trying to come up with new and better ways to help our new members understand the gifts that Fauna has to offer to them with their membership. And if you see this uh, video and you have any questions that we didn't cover or any suggestions on how we can make things better, please reach out to the Fauna office. Thanks, Becca. We've also got uh, several board members here, and I'd first like to introduce our president, Eric Smith. Eric? Thank you, Jason. Thank you all. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody, uh, the committee members, the board members, and all the members for all the hard work, the volunteers, and volunteer hours, the things that we do. It is so greatly appreciated. Uh, welcome all new members. I hope that you find uh, what, what you are looking for. If you can't find what you're looking for, there's so much help for you. There's the mentors, there's uh, the board members, there's other members. Uh, this is truly a member-driven organization and it's a volunteer organization. So thank you for all you do. Thank you for uh, joining Fauna and congratulations on your horses. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. And I know you won't be able to be here for the entire uh, meeting, but we appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to be here. Uh, we've also got uh, board members, uh, Joanne Clough and um, Danielle Piasek. So I want to welcome them as well. Joe and uh, Danielle, any welcoming words? Hi, everybody. Um, we're all here. If you have any questions, we're happy to help. You can reach us by email, by phone. Jason's happy to get you in contact with any of us. Absolutely. Yes, thanks for doing this, Jason. And I have to say, I've been a FAUNA member for many, many years, and there's always something new to learn and always something that you can find to be a benefit to assist you. So um, never be afraid to reach out or ask questions. There's no silly questions. This is a complex uh, breed, so to speak, with the registries and such. So um, take advantage of this. This is a great opportunity. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate you guys being here today. We've got uh, several new members here on the call with us as well. And so uh, we're just going to kind of jump right into this. Um, this is the first time we've done one of these sessions. So um, we're kind of going to break this down and maybe have this be an annual thing or even more than annual, depending on, on the questions that are asked and how much information we can get through. We want to try to have this done in, in about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, and we want to open this up, make this interactive. And if you have any questions throughout the entire session, uh, please uh, feel free to do that. Uh, ask those questions. Um, raise your hand. I think there's a raise your hand uh, feature through Zoom that you can certainly uh, raise your hand. Uh, so today, uh, the session is being recorded, and we would like to just kind of go over the resources to you as a member. Uh, we get several uh, calls uh, once a new member comes on board is, what is my membership number? What is my password? Uh, they seem to have misplaced the information that was mailed to them at one time or another, which is understandable. So we want to help you understand where to find that information, uh, how to access the portal, uh, what resources are available to you through the portal, and uh, maybe how to register a full, how to look up a, a member in the membership directory and so on. So uh, we're gonna primarily focus on the portal itself today and what resources are there. And then we might skip over to some of the other uh, benefits uh, through the website. And I'm sure that our membership committee representatives here will also have a few questions and, and items to highlight as well. So, uh, First thing I want to do is kind of just, I'm going to share my screen.
So the first thing we want to do is we kind of want to go through the Fauna website just a little bit. And uh, one of our board members, Erin Miley, was kind enough to allow me to use her login information today. So I'm already logged in as her. Um, so the best thing to do is I'm right here on the, the homepage. And in the top right hand corner, you'll find a spot that says log in. And for, uh, for this purpose, I'm already logged in. You can see where it says welcome Erin Miley. After you log in, the site will automatically take you right back to the homepage. Uh, to log in, you need your membership number, which is an R number, and it's seven digits. You can, if you have misplaced that number, you can also find it on your horse's registration papers. It is always listed there next to your name. Um, and then you will also need a password. Those passwords can be changed once you log in for the first time. Um, and if you have any difficulties with your password or anything, you can always contact us at fauna at fauna.com. And we'll be happy to help you get that password and uh, get that updated for you. So uh, here I am. I'm logged in as Aaron Miley. So I'm going to click on my fauna, and that's going to take me directly to the fauna portal. So this portal is your information and your information only. So you're the only person that has access to your private information. So the first thing I want to, to do is we get several calls about why am I not showing up in the membership directory? So I want to bring to your attention here, we've got a uh, your profile. And I want to change my profile. So I've got all of my information here in my profile. Like I said, I'm using Erin Miley here. Got all of her name, her address, zip code, state, email, and everything like that. But one of the things you as a member need to do is you need to opt in to the membership directory. That's the only way you can be displayed in the membership directory. So once you click that box, you should be active and anybody within Fauna uh, can see you. Now, if you don't want to be uh, displayed and, and want to keep yourself a secret, then you can certainly unclick that box and uh, none of your information will be, be displayed. So you, this is where you can change any of your information. If you move, uh, you can change your information there and all you have to do is save it. And um, there's a save button down here at the bottom. So if you change your email address or anything like that, and it'll automatically change in the system, and then there's no reason to notify the actual office. So this is your profile on how to change uh, for the directory. Also under your profile, you can change your password. You can also place a classified ad. So we have three different styles of classifieds. We have a basic classified, which is $35. You can add on to that as an executive director ad for an additional $10. And you can also post a uh, YouTube video for an uh, extra $10. Uh, so we send out a classified ad to the membership uh, once a month. We comprise all of these classifieds and, uh, and, and display them. They are also always displayed for 90 days on the website website itself. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So across the top of the page, you'll see sales. All you would do is click on classifieds, and you can see all the classifieds from uh, uh, newest to oldest within 90 days. You can sort these by equipment, tack, price categories, gender, purpose, ages, what region of the country you're looking for. Uh, you can apply all of those filters and uh, display the classified. So, I mean, I wanted to look at this daughter of Anton. Uh, it shows me all of the information, the ad details, who the father and mother are, owner information. And then you get a little description put in there as well. And we comprise all, the, all of that information and we put that into a classified ad uh, for you as the member. The easy thing about the classifieds is you can just click on it. And if I wanted to put in a new classified, 
All I have to do is just follow the easy instructions. All of the headlines, the dates, price category, the details there. And the good thing about it, where is it? The place where you can select the horse. You put your videos, your YouTube. But you can select your horses. Might be I have too many boxes open. I'm not seeing it. But there is a spot that you can select the horse so that you don't actually have to type in all of the information. It's already saved there for you from your list of horses. Uh, from this page, you can renew your membership. Uh, the key to that is you membership does need to be current. So if you know our membership year runs from uh, February 1 to January 31, if you were to log in before January 31, you could renew your membership right there and get it all taken care of, and there would be, uh, be no concerns. After February 1st, you would have to go through it a different route, and we have several of options uh, for your membership as well. Uh, one option right there from the home page. You got a big join renew button right there in the middle. And that gives you all the information you need to renew or join. It's got your membership forms. All you have to do is click on the PayPal button, select the PayPal uh, membership option that you're looking for, and you can renew it right there. It's already captured your information and uh, we'll get you renewed. It usually takes 24 hours to get a membership renewed, but uh, uh, we can get everything taken care of right there for you. So. Are there any questions at this point over my profile? Have I gone over anything too quickly? Um, any thoughts, Becca? I'm going to turn to you from my as my membership person. Can you explain again uh, a little more detail about where you find your number on the registration paper? I absolutely can. I'll show you a picture. How about that? That would be amazing. Okay. Let me find my prison registry. The right picture. Well, that's about the best I can do. I don't actually have a, um, a registration paper that I want to display, but looking at a horse's registration paper, over on the right-hand side, you'll see the word that says Eigenar. Underneath that Eigenar, you'll see, and it's blacked out here, you'll see your R number. And then it'll also have your name and your address and your informa information. And the word Eigenar means owner. So that's how you can tell where, uh, where you can find that R number. Now, again, your password's not listed on your registration papers, just your R number. Does that answer the question, Becca? Yeah. Any other questions about uh, my profile? Next, we kind of want to go through. So I have a question. Somebody here. just says, popped up a question. Yeah. Yep, yep. I see that. It says, what if you don't own a Frisian horse? Where do you get an R number? So all members have an R number, but in order to have access to the portal, only full members or business members have access to that portal. Uh, sport pleasure members do not have access, nor do um, uh, magazine subscribers. So only the members that are full or business have, have our numbers and access to the portal. Next question, or the next uh, section I'd like to kind of go over is my administration. My administration, I, I, pretty self-explanatory if you just kind of start clicking on buttons, which is something I, I always can, uh, <laughs> uh, encourage is just, just start clicking on things. You know, if it breaks, it breaks, then we fix it. And then we know where there's an error. So first thing I'm going to click on is my horses. And this is going to show you all of the horses that you own under your profile. And Miley Friesian's a uh, very reputable breeder has... Oh, oh boy, 41 under, under their name. 
The good thing about uh, my horses is you can just click on any of them and it'll show you all of the information regarding that horse. So if you don't happen to have your registration papers and say you're looking to sell a horse, you can pull this up on your tablet, on your telephone, on your laptop. Let's look at my horses and you can show your potential clients the information that you're looking for regarding uh, your horses. So for this one, I'm going to click on Godiva. And you'll be able to see all of the information from Godiva uh, that's in the system. Godiva happens to be a model mare. Uh, it'll show her date of birth, registration number, her kinship, height, the mare line that she's associated with, and her gender. Any markings if they were there. Um, whether she's got hydrocephalus or dwarfism. And in this case, both of those are free. But if you were a carrier, it would also be displayed there as well. And then it also shows her pedigree, which is also very important. So you can see her, her uh, sire line, which is Sherk 328, or her mother line, which is Raquel. And you can also click on any of those horses, like Raquel here, we'll click on Raquel. And it'll also show you her information. So you can just keep going back and back and back through the whole pedigree and, and get the information that you're looking for. So that's one of the features from My Horses. The next button would be My Inspections. Another good, good item here are the horses that you have had inspected over all of the years of that horse's uh, uh that that horse has been alive so it's just not horses that are being inspected this year it's over that horse's lifetime so again i'm going to go back to G godiva and it gives you all of the information on godiva's inspections uh that she has had here in north america so you can get the uh, results of her uh, ibop score uh, which in this case, she did a driving IBOP in 2007. You can go to 2005 and look at the, the results there. She did a, uh, uh, she was in category five, uh, which is uh, four year old plus for uh, stud book and premiums. She got a first premium and you can see her scores and the results on her linear score uh, is all the information right there as well. So you always have that information at your fingertips. And this information is very good in helping you with your breeding decisions going forward. You can also see, so those are the two inspections right there for Godiva. You can also see my breedings. Now I'm dealing with Miley Frisians here, so there's lots of breedings on this page. Uh, so she happens to be a co-owners of two approved stallions, and you can see that they've had, one had 922 and one's had 2,500 breedings. So that's uh, pretty impressive uh, numbers right there. But I'm gonna go back down here and we'll find, uh, okay, we're gonna go to Godiva again, use her. She has had 17 breedings. You can see the breeding years across the top. Uh, her most recent breeding was in May 21 of 2022. Something interesting that members need to know is that the year and the month uh, are, all, are, are flipped. Okay, that's something that uh, we, get, we do get several calls that the birth date is wrong on my horse. We always have to remember that those two are flipped into European style. Uh, birth date month or date year and month sorry uh, next I'm going to go to my bred horses you can see which horses just happen to be bred this year uh, so for instance where was Godiva I thought I saw Godiva on here earlier today 
but you can look at your uh, your breeding. So say you uh, you bred your mare this year, and uh, of course there's no information that that's sent to you by the stallion owner. There's no information sent to you by fauna, but you have that information available to you in your portal. So at any time after the stallion owner has recorded that breeding, that breeding will be displayed in the system. So I'm going to click on Tobias. It'll show you her date of birth, her registration number, and all of her information. Horses. The next thing we're going to do is go into full registrations. This is where you can see all of your horses again that were bred. And in this particular case, we're going to look at Godiva. It automatically, when you click on that to register your full, shows you who she was bred to and the date it was bred. And then you get to be the lucky one to put in the information here, date of birth, name of the full. And you have to remember that this year uh, we're using the letters W, X, Y, or Z. So every year, there's usually a three letter code, uh, three letters that we have to follow uh, from the KFPS. And those letters are also found on the uh, FAUNA websites. And we'll get into that just a little bit later uh, under registrations. So that information is available to you. You can see uh, there's a form here, registration by letters, gives you in-depth information. So that when you breed this year and you're thinking about your names for 2024, looking ahead, you know it's going to be A, B, or C. Okay. So you need to put in your the gender, the color, which chestnut or black. And the chestnut's in there because this system is often utilized the same as the KWPN. They also utilize the same system. So therefore, Chestnut is a, uh, uh, an option for, for those members uh, that are KWPN. Not that they're tied to Fauna at all, but that option is, is, is there for them. It is also important to notify us if the uh, mare aborted or she didn't get pregnant or it was a stillbirth or anything like that, just to report that that full, uh, what that information was on that full. Um, or whether the mayor was deceased. This automatically updates the records. You, the membership, uh, the breeder information is automatically going to be tied to your name and your membership. If, uh, if for some reason you guys did an embryo transfer or something of that nature where you might not be the breeder based on a contract or uh, they you just sold them the embryo or something of that information, whatever the agreement was, contact us and we'll be able to fix that breeder information for you. But it's automatically going to be tied to the member that's registering the full. Type in your email address. If you have sold the full uh, after it has been born, you can put in their member, the new member's R number and it'll automatically populate their information here and notifies us, and then your payment. All you have to do is type in what type of card, your name, card number, verification code, agree to terms, hit save. A box will pop up that says your full is registered with a uh, registration number. If it, the full is over six weeks, a different box will pop up and it'll say your full is registered upon completion of DNA. That is a, a KFPS box that pops up automatically. It should be noted that Fauna does 100% parentage DNA on all foals that are born. So that box is really not applicable here in North America because we're going to do the DNA testing anyway. So. That's just a box that, that is there. So um, any questions over the full registration or any information I've gone through at this point? 
Jason, how long does it take to get the chip and the information once you've registered your full? Good question, Joe. So as soon as you register your full, and this process takes a member probably two minutes to do out to fill out this right here online and get it paid. Automatically notifies us in the office of this full registration. We print it out, process the payment. And our registrar, Karen Richardson, she usually has the chip kits out by the end of the week. So depending on the U.S. mail, you should have your chip kit within, I would say, 10 days from the time you have registered it. Um, if it's not there within 10 days, we encourage any member to call us, contact us. We can see what's going on and, and reissue it if it needs to be issued. Thank you. Other questions? Becca, I'm counting on you. <laughs> it, the only other thing I would add to it, but I think it's probably one of those things that everybody knows, the chip has to be implanted by a licensed veterinarian. Um, and the chips get sent out with documents that the vet has to sign when they see the full verifying that there's no white marks, uh, there's no defects, and then they fill that form out, they sign it, they will then implant the chip, then you have to send those documents back to the fauna office. Right. Otherwise, you can get the chip, but if you don't send that paperwork signed by a vet back to the office, I would believe that your full will not still be technically registered. Would also encourage you that when you do send in your, your paperwork, that once we receive your DNA back and the chip has been verified and inserted, it takes us four to six weeks to process that DNA with our lab. Um, if you have kept your temporary registration papers, and, and I'm gonna show you those here in just a minute, we refer to those as the blue papers, we, uh, we assume you as the owner are taking that horse to the inspection. And that's where your temporary registration papers will be turned in. And the horse will be inspected. The chips will be registered there at the, uh, they're already registered, but then they'll be verified at the inspection. After the inspection results come in, you will receive your permanent registration papers. Should also be noted on a full registration if for some reason you that finger typed the name incorrectly, you have until the permanent registration papers are issued to make a correction. So we always encourage you to take a look at all of the paperwork that we send to you to make sure the name is spelled correctly how you want it. Because once those, those, those laminated registration papers come, you can't change it. There is nothing we can do. So after you've registered your foal or you have your three-year-old or you're looking to have take a stallion to be viewed or, or you have that, uh, that gym crown mare that you want to take and have it uh, be inspected for a, an upgrade, well, you've got that right here on your portal as well. And that's the enter a horse in an inspection or a performance test. So we're going to just do that today. We're going to look at so let's go down here to the bottom. So we've got this Cobain MFF. We're going to register that horse for an inspection. I've got to write this down so that I can make sure I get this corrected on the back side. So I've got Cobain right here in front of me. This is a stallion. So the first thing you want to do is you want to select uh, where you're going. And on the Fauna calendar, under inspections, let's go here under inspection info. We have a handy dandy uh, inspection location. If you click on any of these, it'll tell you exactly where this inspection is, the date, who the site host is. 
their contact information on any of these um, So as you can see, we've got Alberta, and these are all color-coded by a circuit. We have five circuits that are available here in North America this year, and they're all color-coded here. What we mean by a circuit here, we've got the calendar here with a little bit more information for you when it comes to the inspections. So circuit one will start August 31st, and it will end September 6th and 7th. And that is primarily our Canadian circuit. Then we've got circuit two, which is more of a southern southeast circuit. All of their contact information here, the requirements to attend their inspection here. Uh, the location is here as well on this calendar. Uh, we've got circuit three, which is more of an east coast and uh, central US. We've got circuit four which is more of a upper Midwest and West Coast. And then something new we've done this year is we've added a fifth circuit. And a fifth circuit is something we're very excited about this year because this is a new opportunity for all of our members to have their horses inspected later on in the year as well. And we've got other opportunities there such as uh, education clinics, uh, plus, we're going to have our mare shows tied into those, too. And it just so happens we've got our uh, our inspection chair. Joe is on the call here today. So, Joe, maybe you want to give a little uh, input on to the Circuit 5. Oh, I'd be happy to. And, and Jason, you are right. This is so exciting and quite unprecedented. It's an entire week of activities, and it starts with a three-day judging course taught by Will Tyson, who is an amazing clinician, very experienced and works so well with the North American members. I highly encourage the new members to consider this learning opportunity. You will learn so much about confirmation and movement. What are the judges looking for? How can you use this information for breeding decisions? You know, what's the sportability of your horse potentially like? So, it is just amazing the skills and resources that you'll get from that three-day course. Following that, we have two-day clinic with uh, Jenny Vinstra, a dressage clinic who's an amazing uh, trainer from, uh, I think she's from Belgium. And um, she is quite known, well-known in North America for presenting. He's just a lovely lecturer and just a plethora of information that she presents and just a, a great, great personality to work with. And then we have Clay Meyer, who will be doing a driving clinic for two days. And we're so excited that he joined our team. So there's really much to choose from if you want to develop your skill sets during those first five days. Following that, there will be a full day of inspections. And that's going to be exciting because we have all categories. So that means mares and geldings and stallions and foals. And you can watch the judges judging these animals and learn so much by being there to see what they're looking for and how they award those premiums. We will also be having a stallion viewing and a mare competition on Saturday. And this is so exciting because this hasn't happened. And maybe Jason, you can tell me the last time, but it's been a long time since the jury has come over from the Netherlands to look at our stallions. And I'm so pleased to know that we are partnering with them this year for that event. Um, I'm going to be in the West. I wish, I mean, sorry, in the East. I, I wish I could be there at the West as well. It's well worth the, the time. It's well worth the expense. Uh, a great opportunity, jam-packed, full of activities and opportunities and learning. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. My name is Joe Clough. Uh, I can help you, Jason can help you, the inspection committee as well. So we are really pumped up and we would love to see you there. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate that information. I know that this is uh, something we've been working on for almost a year now at this point, uh, trying to pull all this together and so many moving uh, pieces to this to try to get it all together. So um, if you don't have a horse you want to bring and you just want to come participate and see what happens at an inspection, this is a great opportunity as well. So. Thanks, Joe. Welcome. Next, we're going to go back and we're going to register this horse for the inspection. 
again, really pretty straightforward. You just need to know the month of your inspection. And for this one, we're going to go to October. And we're going to search it. And it's going to give me all of the different locations that are available to me in October. And I know that this horse is going to go to Springfield, Ohio. So I have two opportunities for this horse. Okay, one, folk dag, that is your in hand, that means breeding day. And uh, so that's your in hand class. And then the IBOP test, which is a performance test. And you have the opportunity to do that under saddle or uh, in carriage. And those are uh, both available at all locations at anywhere here in North America. So for this particular horse, we're going to do it with the breeding days. I'm going to slide that over. So I'm going to just click uh, sign up. It's going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to give me the dates. It's going to give me the circuit it's on. And then all I have to do is select the category. And this particular horse is a stallion. So I, it's going to be in 17. And uh, you have a few options. And, I, and I'll go back to the options of, of the rubric. Rubric means category. And then all you do is you type in your uh, credit card information, your payment. Click the box, you hit save, and that horse is entered for the inspection. Pops over to us on the back end of the websites, and uh, your horse is all taken care of. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to do a mirror this time, just so you can kind of see the difference. Get the horse from this. Let's... Let's do Cura. So again, we just go ahead and select the, the location that we want. If I don't know the month, maybe I don't know that information. I can select from any of the North American uh, inspection locations that are available to you. So I'm going to go down here and maybe... Uh, this one, I want to go to Coatesville, PA. So we'll sign up there. Again, it's got all my information. I'm going to click on the category. And it's going to be category nine. I know that because 19 and 21 are not applicable here in North America. They are options in the Netherlands. That's why they are displayed here. But always always go with the top selection when you're selecting for the inspection. So I would just click on category nine, fill out that information and click save. The other options for the inspection is you can always do the current site application. And this is the handwritten form. All you would have to do with this is on this piece right here, it shows you the different categories and the fee structure. The inspection for Colts and Phillies is already included. So that fee is, is, is not applicable when it comes to the inspections because it's already included. We really encourage you to bring your Colts and your Phillies to the, uh, to the inspections. So all of the fee structure is listed right here on the sheets. Your deadlines right here around the additional fees. And then all you would do is fill out your information. We do ask that you please fill this out to the best of your knowledge. Put the inspection date, uh, all this owner information. Please fill in the horse's registration number. Um, it really helps us out to uh, make sure we get the right horse entered. Now, if you don't know the class, uh, for instance, you think it might be in class five and actually it's probably in class seven. We will fix that on our end. The system will not allow us to enter the horse in the wrong class. It, it is designed. It is dummy proof for us. Uh, it really, really is. So <laughs> we, we, we uh, you know, feel free, uh, you know, 
it happens. If you're going to make a mistake on it, we will fix it for you. And there's no different fee because they're all 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 the fees are exactly the same. So here. Any questions over the uh, inspections at all? Jason, the only thing I would add is that uh, if a member is bringing a horse to inspection to also contact the site host for their respective location, because there's a registration that needs to be done for that as well. Great. Thanks, Joe. Yep. And those, uh, go back to that page here. Again, after you've registered with us, we do encourage you to contact your site host. Oh, contact your site host. You can click on the box. Like I said, it gives you the information on, on uh, who to contact, their email, their phone numbers, and you want to contact them about uh, what registration fees or site fees that they may have at that particular location. We'd also encourage you to review the inspection handbook. And that is a great tool that the inspection committee has worked on and they update that annually. Uh, it gives you all of the basic information on who to contact, uh, where to go, uh, what to bring, um, shots that are, are required. It goes through the uh, IBOP test very thoroughly, um, goes through the in-hand piece very thoroughly. Um, Lots of great information that is right there in that inspection handbook that will really help make your uh, inspection experience a positive one. And I believe, Becca, that it's coming in Spanish very soon. It will be in Spanish in the next 48 <laughs> hours. All of the current documents, I believe, will be, be set up in Spanish. The handbook, uh, the IBOPs, um, and the application. Great, great. Thank you for doing that, Becca. That's just a huge, huge benefit. Um, my pleasure. Jason, Hi. maybe, I don't know if you're going to do this, but um, with respect to inspections, that there's a really wonderful group of webinars on the website too, that would help somebody mm -hmm. learn what's uh, expected or required. Great. Yeah, great point, Joe. Uh, so we right there on our homepage, right there, we've got our six primary blocks that we uh, we have available to you as members. Uh, webinars, great big piece of everything we've done. Every webinar that we have conducted is on this page, uh, and they are great information to go back and refer to. Um, we did a five-piece series last was it last spring over inspections uh with a couple of our dutch members uh petra zeeland and uh duca hoekstra uh preparing your frisians for inspections you've got part one uh you've part two so i would encourage any member to go back and uh, review that information goes over the grooming what to do everything that you can find in your uh handbook is also available right here as part of the webinars too so um Great, great point, Joe. Thank you. We'll finish up the admin piece here, and then we'll open this up for questions a little bit. Um, if you were to sell a horse, and for instance, the person did not transfer the horse into their name, or you wanted to go ahead and get it taken out of your name, you could right here report the sale of the horse. It uh, All that does is it just takes the horse out of your name and puts it into an unknown owner's name. And that horse will be sitting in an unknown owner's name until that new person transfers it into their name. Again, you can also report the death of a horse, uh, which we always encourage. It really helps us keep up-to-date information. And you can download your birth certificate. So uh, when, you're, when you report that full registration, as part of your packet, we send you your temporary registration papers, or we call them your blue papers. That's what you would take to the inspection if you went and if you take you take your full to the inspection. But for some reason, members lose them. 
It does happen. They get spilled. They're in the barn. They got it soiled, whatever it could be. People lose them. So you can pull up any of your horses right here. You can pull up. I'm going to click on, uh, uh, let's click on one of the new horses here. So one of her 2023 course, horses here, we're going to pull up Zabrina. It's going to download it to your computer. Pull it up here. And that's what the blue paper looks like that we send to you. It's got all of your information. It's got the horse's registration number, uh, the sire, the dam, the breeder information, uh, the owner's information. The only thing that's going to be missing is the chip number. And you can certainly contact us for that chip number if for some reason you have lost it. Uh, we do put that chip number on all of the documentations that uh, we do send to you. But this is the piece that you would need if you were to lose your paper, you're in a panic, it's inspections the next day, you can pull that right off of your portal and not have to wait for an email, somebody to respond back to you or whatever it could be. It's all right there at your fingertips. Any questions over the My Administration piece of your portal? Nothing? Next, we'll go over very briefly member services. And I'm going to go through the member directory really quick here. So I've got my member directory here again. And remember, only the people that have opted in to be a part of the directory will be displayed. So for this piece, I'm going to look up Becca. And I know Becca is in New Hampshire. I'm just gonna, that's gonna help me search it down. Becca's not on there. <laughs> to Wisconsin. Oh, you guys are in my way. Down, down. Yeah, I, I had to move, move my my, my feet. <laughs> and there's the Badger Joanne. State. So you can pull up Joanne. You can get all of her contact information, her phone number, her email. Uh, is the state that she lives in. And you can also see Joanne's uh, horses that she owns as well. You can click on any of those horses. So if you were interested in uh, Joanne had a horse for sale and you wanted to look it up a little bit closer, you could pull up her profile and uh, see it right there. So we'll go back here, uh, membership directory, say I don't know the person's last name and I just want to look at people in a certain area. Say, I want to look at owners in Hawaii. And it'll give us the two, the two that are opted in. I believe there's, uh, Megan, if you're still on here, I believe we've got a few owners in Hawaii, right? Yes, there's definitely more than are listed on the member directory. So this just shows the, the owners in that area that have opted into the directory. Uh, and you can do that by state. So that's kind of the, the piece there to the membership directory. But we want to also wanted to show you another option here. We get several calls here in the office about our readers and sellers list. These are typically business members that are listed here on the readers and sellers list. It's very similar to the membership directory, but uh, you can click on if you uh, don't know, say you live in Tennessee and you don't know anybody in Tennessee, you're not a member and you're looking to get into the Frisian business. Well, I could contact here, Amanda, it'll pull up her information with her email or telephone number. And uh, that's one of the benefits of being a breeders and sellers list owner as well. Uh, owner as well. Uh, Arizona, I, I live in Arizona. I don't know anybody, but boy, I've got a member here that. Uh, lives in Queen Creek. That's just right down the street, right? Let's call her up and and uh, and uh, see if we can come over, see some Frisians, and uh, get excited about getting into the breed. 
So that's the membership directory piece of this. Do I have any members from the Breeders Committee on, on this call today? Danielle, I know you're not uh, on the Breeders and Sellers or the Breeders uh, Committee, but maybe you can talk us through the inbreeding coefficient. Yeah, can I can do my best. Can you do that for us? Okay. Of course. Um, so it's a great tool. I personally use it practically every day. Um, Jason, you want to click the first one for me? Yep. So when we pick Tessa, um, we can see that her kinship herself is 17.8. I didn't, I did not see who she was out of. So we're just going to wing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's back. try. Yeah, let's go back. So, um, uh, okay, um, let's try. Um, let's breed him to, let's breed her to Omar. Aaron, we're breeding your mare to Omar. So this list gives you all of the stallions that are available for breeding. Yes, throughout um, the Netherlands as well as the US. So if you have frozen, if you have fresh, any of the stallions available will come up here. So let's breed her to Omar. So I'm gonna click on the calculate. That was Norbert. Oh, what? Yeah, let's breed her to Norbert, it's okay. We'll bring her to Norbert. Thought I brought her to Omar. Omar. Go to the right. Over. Oh, see, you're covered up. You're covered up with my people here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me move my people. And as you can see, Omar hasn't been updated. Still shows that he's standing in the Netherlands. Um, so this will show you within five generations as well as six. You can see for inbreeding, this is you know a great choice. But for kinship is 17. So that is a great breeding. I'd be very happy with 17 kinship. Estimating breeding values will always give you type, frame, feet and legs, walk, trot, and canter. These are estimated, however. So you can't, these are not set in stone. This is just gonna give you a good starting point. Um, this mare has tested positive for dwarfism gene and hydrocephalus. So with this stallion, there is no risk for dwarf or hydrocephalus as he is negative. That's very important. You're always gonna to wanna to know whether your mare has tested positive or negative as well as the stallion. It's a very important part of breeding. And I love that the calculating was gonna show that for you. Um, let's see, if you go down, it's going to show you all of your lines, which this part to me is fascinating. I love to see all of the different lines throughout the line for both stallion and mare. Um, let's see, anybody have any questions? You can always go back and change the stallion and it's going to keep giving you all the different calculations. Hey, Danielle, so is it... When you do the breeding, and let's just say she's a carrier and a stallion is a carrier, doesn't it, uh, when you get that combination, give you like a warning or some type of yeah. a message back? Yeah. So it's going, I always, always pay attention to whether, whether you know or not, um, whether the stallion is positive or negative for both, as well as the mare. And if you don't know, it's going to tell you. It's going to give you a warning that says this is going to carry, um, I don't know if it tells you a 50% chance or if it does carry a mating. Um, I don't know that off the top of my head, but it will give you a warning saying that this gives you a risk of a carrier with hydrocephalus or dwarfism. Great, any other questions over this? This is a great tool that all breeders know. Uh, Danielle, maybe you can mention a little bit about uh, the linear score sheet and how that might tie into the two, choosing your stallion a little bit. Yep. So the linear score sheet for your mare will be in your profile, which you will always be able to see. So I go through it and I will say my mare needs better confirmation, needs better feet and legs. I'm going to look for a stallion that's going to improve upon that in her. You it. It's a little bit of, you know, playing the game of more me as a breeder. Um, so say my mare has terrible feet and legs, but has a fantastic trot. 
I'm not looking to improve much on her trot, but I really want to improve upon that confirmation. So what's this mare here did a driving eye bop and she got a seven on her trot. Great. I'm not so much worried about a stallion with a great trot, but maybe this mare needs better feet. So I'm going to bring her to a stallion that I know has good feet. Mm -hmm. On here, um, so let's see. She's got a good walk. She's got a good trot. What do you think? Let's see. Um, she got a, let's, you're yeah. scrolling. Yeah, I got to go here. Uh, it's not giving me the scores. No. Um, here, go, they, here they are. There you go. Had to find the right ear. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so before, I don't know if it still shows it. Before it used to show you um, the grid where you'd have the blue mm -hmm. line and it would show further over. On here, I do like that you can see the numbers. Um, she's got nice forearm, her hind leg stance, you know, I would want to improve upon that a little bit. So I'd look for a stallion that had good hind legs. I'm not so worried about her length of her forearm. So I'm not worried about a stallion with that, but I would want to improve upon things where maybe she's a little bit lacking. This is the first premium mare. So this is going to be a good quality mare. So you're going to want to breed to a stallion that is going to improve upon the small things that she needs improved upon. Um, when I look at my horses, I'm very subjective. I'm, everybody loves their horses, but you always want to look at your mare and say, where can my mare improve? How as a breeder can I improve upon what she's going to throw? So you're going to look at these to see, you know, where does she need improvement upon? Does she need improved on her loins? Does she need a better back? Is she too sloping in her shoulder? Is she sickle hawked? All mm -hmm. of these things you will find in these, well, I like the grids, but here you'll see the numbers. Um, and when you're comparing your stallions, you want to know how that stallion is going to improve upon that mare. I hope that made sense. Mm -hmm. Joe, you have anything to add upon that as a breeder? No, I think you did a really nice job reviewing that. And maybe to just reiterate here that breeding for your first time can be very scary in trying to make the right match. And we have resources available for you uh, to help you understand this. So after you, you've attended your first inspection and gotten this linear score sheet, uh, we, have a, we have committees that'll help you understand this uh, so that the, when it does come time for breeding, uh, that committee can also help you make the right decision that you want. They're not going to tell you which stallion to use. You, you ultimately have to make that decision yourself, but they can help you understand it so that you can make that decision correctly. Uh, one of the things that uh, I love about working for Fauna is that this information is available to you uh, as breeders. Um, other registries don't go to this depth to really help you understand uh, why it is so important to go to an inspection is to get this information so that you can continue to breed top quality Frisian horses. Yeah. And that's, that's what it's about. Um, they go through a lot of energy and time to, uh, to put this information together for everybody. I think another bonus uh, as being a Fauna member in the fact that the breeders in North America that own the approved stallions are really generous with their time and any Fauna member can go on to the website and get the list of the, the approved stallions in North America. You can contact those, those owners and those breeders and ask them questions about your horse and um, they'll be happy uh, to talk to you about it also. So that's another um, great asset that we have here. I have one more thing to add. Absolutely. Being a new member, it can be nerve wracking. You don't know people. Maybe you're not a social person. Send an email, um, send a text message, contact Jason, contact your board of directors. We are always happy to help you get in contact with who you need to talk to. Um, we have our mentors who are absolutely fantastic. I know quite a few of them and they absolutely love what they do. They love connecting with you. So if you don't want to reach out to an entire committee, reach out to your mentor and they can help you get in contact. Reach out to Jason, 
reach out to any of your board members, any of your committee chair people, that everyone is happy to help. I know it can be scary, but do it. I mean, we're here to help. We want to help and no question is too small. And it's important to note that, what was it, uh, Becca, maybe a year and a half, it's probably almost been two years now, we, we developed the mentor program for our members. Yeah. And every month, our mentors receive a list of names uh, of new members that are a part of this organization. Um, and I know that uh, they've been sending letters and contacting everybody, and it works. It really it does work <laughs> for them. Yeah. Um, it's really helping bring uh, new members in. Uh, and keeping them with the association. If you if you're going to contact anybody and you're nervous, contact them. That's mm -hmm. what they are are mm -hmm. in place for. Um, myself and our other two employees that we have in the office are are a wealth of knowledge. We will certainly direct you to the right people. Um, question came up about, well, who do I contact? How do I contact that committee? Well, under the home, the homepage here, we've got the header and under about, we have a list of all of the committees and it'll show you your board of directors, your inspection committee, uh, gives you all the information as to who is a part of that particular committee. And we've made it even handy enough where uh, we've got the chair uh, highlighted there. I thought their email was tied to it. It's not, I have to go back and look at that. Well, see, things happen. Um, I thought it was working. Um, but that information is right there as part of uh, each committee. They're highlighted the chair. You can contact them. Use your uh, member directory to uh, locate them and uh, get in touch with them right away. And they will certainly help you uh, understand this information too. And if you want to get involved, I mean, any of these committees, uh, that's a great way to get started. Um, we have a member on here today, Julie Carpus. She, that she's been a member for. Uh, Julie, are you here? I am. You've been a member. This is what your second or third year. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yes, at least three. At least three, and she is now getting very, very much involved uh, in various committees. And uh, Julie, maybe you want to tell us about your process and, and how this all came and evolved for you. Sure. So I started, I think, first with contacting you, Jason. Um, or maybe I, maybe I was, I think I contacted the office and I just sent a general email saying, you know, I'd really like to be involved with more, um, more in fauna in general. And um, I knew about the committees and I contacted, you gave me the name of a couple of chairs of the committees that I said that I was interested in and I contacted them and I sat in on a couple meetings um, with the committee to see if it would be a good fit or if, um, I also asked if they were looking for someone and um, I had a couple of committees that I was interested in. So I just, you know, kept asking, inquiring, talking to people, and I ended up on three committees, and I'm super happy with all of them. Um, bit off a little more than I could chew sometimes, I think, but I'm just really happy to be involved in learning so much and being welcomed by everyone. Um, it's really been a great experience, and I'm so glad to be involved in learning more, participating with um, this breed. Great. Thanks, Julie. We're happy to have you involved. And, uh, you know, if there's more members out there that just want to get involved, uh, just give us what your interests are and we'll be able to kind of point you in the right direction. And it's not a, a, a huge commitment. You know, Julie's taken on three committees, but uh, Becca, uh, from a uh, from a chair standpoint, you probably spend a little bit more time as a chair on a committee. But what would you say the average uh, uh, committee member spends on a in a month i would say two to three hours per committee it's usually an hour we try to do every monthly meeting at about an hour and then we all take on action items from that meeting uh, that usually take one or two hours to complete and then we report that information back at the next meeting we try to not overtax anybody with too much homework or information um 
and just appreciate, you know, for us, for the, our membership committee, a lot of stuff happens in the meeting. It's, it's the roundtable discussions. It's what we've as experienced as members, what we would like to see be better for new members and the next members and the existing members. And it's just about really having a better sense of community and making sure that everybody knows what the FAUNA community is and what we can offer to each other. Great, thank you, thank you. Jess, what would you say, how many hours do you spend on, on the membership committee right now? Well, don't include all the drawings I make you. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask that of. Um, I, I think exactly what Becca said is correct for a general member. I think that you can put in as much or as little time as you want. It depends on how involved you want to get. Um, for me, I do enjoy giving with my talent. So it's an art talent. So I do the membership gift and uh, we have a few other things planned. Um, so it involves some, you know, art skill, which does take time, but I'm happy to give it. So um, for me, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly. It, it kind of, it depends on the project we're working on, but again, it's something that I'm happy to do. You, uh, you can give as much time or as, as little time as you want. I think once you're actually involved in the committees, that's where you really see how FANA shines and you can and you get really excited about it. I think being a part of a committee is uh, an integral part of being a member personally, so. Great, thank you. Thanks for sharing. Welcome. That is really all of the basic information I wanted to share tonight out of the portal. Um, the rest of the information, I mean, I, I, I feel is pretty straightforward with the FAQs and the transfer information on how to transfer a horse. You know, I'll just open it up real quick. Uh, we've got about 15 more minutes. I, I don't want to go over an hour and a half because uh, I know a lot of this stuff could be overwhelming. People start to fall asleep after after a little bit of time. So um, any questions over the portal at all? Because this is this is this is where everything works right here for you as a member. Jason, um, I think there's so much um, information that potentially we would need to, you know, um, uncover for people. Perhaps what we could do is um, have those questions put out there and then have be a little bit more detail on certain things. I said this is a great way to kind of give a broad introduction to FANA um, and the website, which is fantastic. Thank you very much for doing that. But um, as far as like thinking about entry inspections and stuff like that, I think there's uh, looking through, uh, when we were looking through like the scoring, there's so many questions that can come up with that, that we don't have time to go in depth in um, on this one meeting, but perhaps that's something we could do in the future is just talk about maybe just inspections or just other topics that need a little bit more in depth um, talk about. Absolutely. And I think uh, a lot of that is going to be really time sensitive. Um, so maybe, you know, when we, we focus on post inspections, uh, I think we covered a lot of pre inspection this time on how to get entered and, and so forth. But I think I would like to just do one focused on post inspection and maybe bring the mm -hmm. breeding committee in a little bit uh, uh, in on that oh, and yeah. helping them use the utilize that information to make good breeding decisions going forward. Uh, hopefully the membership may be on board with that, Becca. Yeah, could you quickly, just because it's also um, some new things that we're offering, just quickly go over the award section that we now have for the members? Absolutely, absolutely. So one of the things we want to do is we want to recognize everyone's hard work that you guys are doing with your Frisian horses, whether it's trail riding down uh, by the river or it's competing in Drashaw shows or in hand shows or you're a trainer and you're you're doing some spectacular things with uh, your training skills and so forth so uh, go here right here on the home page right across the top you've got your toolbar here across the top and uh, under awards you'll see all of the various awards that we have to offer and there is plenty. The sports committee led by Gail All Miller has done a terrific job yeah. making sure that there is something for everyone uh, available as part of the awards program. Um, 
for instance, we've got, uh, I think there's 12 off the top of my head. I believe there's 12 different performance awards now. Um, and each one of these awards is broken down by region. We have seven regions within Fauna. And we want to recognize mm -hmm. uh, each of the regional winners. And then from those regional winners, we get an overall winner as well. So uh, you might be competing in um, Alberta and thinking, well, I have no way of winning the overall thing because I'm competing against overall by California, where they have shows of plenty, or Florida, where they have shows of plenty. But regionally, you could do very well um, looking at, uh, at how you could compete regionally. So we've got several uh, performance, whether they're dressage or driving in hand. Uh, we've added Western dressage here recently. Um, we've got things for youth, uh, youth awards. And then we've got this fauna recreational youth program, uh, youth program, should, excuse me. And this is uh, something that's, that I actually took to the uh, sports committee just last week, and they're going to tweak this uh, just slightly. So uh, if you're out riding your horse and you want to just uh, collect hours, which, which is what this program is for, to be recognized for utilizing your Frisian out there, your first um, monument, or, or is that the right word, monument? I've lost my train of thought already. Uh, your first goal is going to be 50 hours. Mm -hmm. And then from there, Brilliant. you're going to go to 100 hours. And then from 100, it'll go to 150 and so forth, uh, or, or up to 250. Um, and so they have, they're, they're, they're reworking that recreational use, use program uh, to get you as a member out there doing things with your horse. And that's that's the goal is to show what your horses can do and show them off and get them out in front of people. So uh, we have talent cup awards. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's plenty of there's awards to, uh, to be available. Um, we like to end our, our award season at the end of November, which is typically the end of the showing season uh, for most individuals. And then we award everything during our annual general meeting, which is, uh, normally held the last last week of February. So um, Becca happens to be a sponsor of one of the awards. Uh, Becca, any comments you'd like to make about our award program? It's really easy. Um, you just click on what award you would be working on. Um, if you want to go to whichever one. Uh, one of the new things that's also exciting is that uh, Fauna and the um, committee have a, um, now I can't talk, Jason. <laughs> they have uh, the Sun Sunflower Show Series, which is a virtual uh, show. Um, and you can show from home and record it and send it in. And you're allowed to use those, some of those also now for your scores. Um, you just print out the form, fill it in and send it in at the end of the season. It's really user-friendly. They worked really hard on, on putting all these awards together um, for us to earn. Um, and they would love for every single division to have a winner. So I just, I challenge you all to find which one would suit you best. If you're not a shower, then there is the recreational use one and, and send in your application. You just never know. And I can't stress this again enough. Just submit it because as Becca said, you just never know. Yeah, <laughs> you just never right? know. Yeah. And each one of the awards is very detailed as to how to submit it, how to uh, calculate the scores, and um, pretty pretty detailed. And our sports committee is terrific at helping anybody right. get their scores entered. So if you have questions, I can put you in touch with them. Um, they want people entered. That is that is the key. Is is they want to see what people are doing with their horses. So. Hopefully I've covered enough of the awards. Any other comments? Joe, maybe a comment? Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, I just wanted to make a pitch for the health committee. This is a really exciting group. And could you just show the research tab and that information? And as you're doing that, I'll just give a little background. The health committee is, is really focused on health issues and wellness of the Frisian horse. Uh, we have a grant program where we fund 
academic research on some of the key diseases afflicting Frisian horses. We also have a research coordinator who is excellent that can be contacted by any member who can help and assist with getting people aligned with research on a specific disease that may be of concern for them. We also have um, kind of a network of individuals. So for example, if you have a horse with DSLD, we can get you hooked up with some experts, some senior members that can give you some um, guidance, some suggestions where to go on management. And for just a quick example, we do have a webinar this Thursday from Dr. Bronx from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and she'll be speaking on DSLD. So it's a very rich group in terms of offering uh, research articles for the magazine, webinars, and a listing of research centers on specific diseases. And again, our, our grant program that we fund, have been funding the last two years with a $10,000 award. And uh, this year we awarded the 10,000 UC Davis um, looking at the use of Brevecto for dealing with parasites, which can be a problem for many equids, not just Frisian horses. So um, check it out. It's a great uh, site here on uh, the Fauna webpage. And we've got key people that you can reach out to. So thank you, Jason. Great, thanks, Joe. That's a, a great program that uh, we started as part of our strategic planning initiative uh, a few years ago. And uh, it's really kind of hit the ground running here in the last two years uh, with that uh, great group that's uh, supporting that. And I must also uh, mention that we work very closely with the Fenway Foundation for Frisian Horses when it comes to a lot of our research. And uh, they have some special initiatives too. If you happen to have lost a horse uh, or have questions about, about some of the health issues regarding horses, uh, they have a great, great uh, wealth of information that they will be happy to share with you and, uh, and help you understand what, what might be going on with your horse uh, better. That's one of the unique things about the Frisian community is we have foundations like the Fenway Foundation available to you as a member uh, to have that extra research. Uh, so there's so much more available to you as a member of FANA uh, than, than some of these other registries. Uh, because of so much information and so much history is out there. I mean, the KFPS has been around for a uh, better part of 150 plus years. And, and you need to note that any member of FAUNA is also an indirect member of the KFPS too. So you have access uh, to their website with your login credentials as well. So um, that's, that's also just great information. So you've not only got the FAUNA portal, but you've got the KFPS portal, which also has uh, a wealth of knowledge to you also, which we can get into on another day as well. So um, in closing, I wanna thank everybody for being here today. Hopefully you found this information uh, helpful in your quest to being a Frisian owner as a new member, uh, understanding uh, some of the basics of your portal uh, that's the that's the basics of where to start. Um, I want to ask um, Becca, maybe as the membership committee, for some closing remarks from you. I just would like to thank everybody for taking some uh, valuable time out of your evening and joining us. If you're watching this video um, later on the internet, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me or Jason or reach out to your mentors. We're, we're here to help and we're excited to see uh, you become more active in FAUNA. And thank you for coming tonight. Great, great. Thanks, Becca. This was a great, great idea that the membership committee had uh, to put this together. And we hope to do more of these in the future. And uh, uh, of course, we did record this. We'll turn this over into our webinar library and put this out to the membership. Uh, so they have a, a better understanding. They can go back and, and watch this as well. Uh, our two board members, I want to thank you guys for making the time uh, to be here as well. Danielle and Joe, any comments at all? I thought this was exciting, and I, I hope we can continue this. I know that there's more uh, in the well to tap, so um, and I'm excited about exploring the KFPS portal, too, with members. I think that's a great point to make. So, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for doing this, Jason. It was, it was really well done. Absolutely, it's such a wealth of knowledge that everyone is still learning. So reach out to your mentors, reach out to your committee chairs, Jason, your board members, 
everyone is here to help. They're happy to help. I would ask that if uh, we haven't covered a question that you've thought of uh, after after the fact, you came up with some questions, feel free to send an email to fauna at fauna.com. That's F-H-A-N-A at F-H-A-N-A dot com. We'll get those questions answered for you or we'll point them in the right direction uh, to your committee chair and uh, board liaison and get you an answer there as well. So uh, we'll get another one of these scheduled uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks. It'll probably be after the inspections are over. Uh, we'll do kind of a post inspection and we'll go over uh, some more of the actual what what benefits do I have as a FAUNA member? Maybe dive into some of those a little bit as well. So the membership committee will come up with some, some more topics to discuss as well. But uh, I want to thank everybody this evening and wish everybody a safe and happy week. Thanks, Jason. Have a good thank evening. You, thank you, Jason. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.